everybody, Joe Workman here. And in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the new call to action stack and how to use it. So I'm um, not really, really gonna dive into all the features. We're just gonna deep dive straight into RapidWeaver and see exactly how easy it is to implement. So here we are inside the demo project that ships with call to action. And this is the project that is used to build the demo website for call to action. And what you'll notice in the library is that call to action ships with two stacks. You have the call to action stack and then the scroll line stack. The first one we're gonna review is this call to action stack. And it's really simple. You add it to the page. There's actually by default no content uh, to add, right? It's just a stack that you add to the page. So if we dive into the settings, we'll see that the settings are basically broken down into kind of four different sections. First, we have the trigger, okay? And this is going to be exactly what action do we wanna trigger our call to action for, right? Is it on scroll, on click, on enter, or exit intent, okay? Now, an action, you can actually have multiple triggers for a single action. So if you wanted this to be able to be on scroll, click, enter, and exit, you can do that, okay? And what you'll notice is as you start ticking these triggers, options will show up for it, okay? So like for example, on scroll, the scroll offset is the number of pixels it's gonna wait until that element is on the screen to actually trigger that action. So when this setting is set to 50, it's gonna wait till that particular point that you've added it to the page is 50 pixels from the bottom, and then it will trigger the action. Um, click doesn't have any particular actions, but you'll notice that the you now have a drop down area, okay? Uh, we'll go over that in just a little bit uh, on how you can potentially use that drop down for clicks. For enter, you'll notice that you have a load delay. This is the number of seconds that, uh, after the page load that the action will be triggered. So by default, it's gonna be zero. So it means that action is gonna get triggered immediately after the page is loaded. But you could say, you know, load it five seconds after uh, the page is loaded, so on and so forth. Next up is exit. And we'll see that um, with exit, we have different exit intent logic. The default is gonna be focus out. Then we have other things of leave mouse top and leave mouse top and focus out. And we'll show examples of that in a little bit. So that's how we define our trigger, okay? Our call to action, okay, this is the actual action that you want to launch. Now, in this instance, I'm launching my reveal stack, okay? And, but you'll notice that if you wanna select a different stack to launch, you just select that stack. And what you'll notice is that there, every single one has a very unique identifier setting to it, okay? The only one that kind of doesn't right now is Popbox. And Popbox, the way it works, since the stack itself doesn't have any sort of ID settings, what you do is you, you define the Popbox instance. So if you have just one instance of Popbox on your page and you want to launch it, you would set that to one. If you were to have two instances on your page and you wanted this action to trigger the second instance, you would set this to two, right? So it's pretty simple. Um, to use. The rest of them all have some sort of unique identifier that is bring that has come in from the settings of that particular stack. After our, our actual call to action, uh, we have the occurrence. And this defines how often you want that action to be triggered. So only once, this is going to say that basically you only want to have this action trigger once ever for a user, okay? Um, they can clear their cookies and whatnot. This will, it still will not trigger, okay? If they completely destroy all their, their cache in their browser, it will refresh again, right? But this is very persistent. Um, there is no exp expiration date on it. Um, the user will only see it one time. You can say once per time period. So this is where it uses a cookie uh, that expires after a certain time. So you can say, you know, I only want to show it once per 100 days or 50 days or 30 days, right? And what you'll notice is whenever you click an occurrence, you'll get various options here. The action ID, okay, this allows us to keep track of this action. 
And this action ID actually allows you to keep track across multiple pages as well, right? So if you're saying once per time period and you have the same exact call to action on multiple pages, it will only trigger once on all the pages as long as it has the same exact action ID. So that's, that's really important. This ID can be used to tie your action and your occurrences across your entire site. You can do once per session. Uh, once, per she once per session means that um, if the user closes their browser or opens a new tab, that is considered a new session and they will see that call to action again. But once they've seen it within that session, they will never see it again until they start a new one. And then you have once per page load, which is basically, you're gonna see that action once on the page, and if they refresh the page or come back to it at any point, it will happen again. And then lastly, we have tracking. And this allows us to do custom uh, event tracking into our analytics software. So if you wanna choose Google, you can then choose the category action and label for that action, and that will be logged inside Google Analytics. And same thing for all the other analytics software. Now there is a custom option here, and with this, what you need to do is you need to put in the exact JavaScript code that your analytics software requires. Now, if this doesn't work, you're gonna to have to work with your analytics software company to figure out what it is, right? Um, I can't help with everybody's JavaScript code, right? Um, I added this for ex explicitly for people that have analytics software that is outside of these supported ones. So uh, you can add your own analytics code and it will launch this JavaScript. So um, be careful with your syntax, make sure it's perfect and um, it will get executed. So I said earlier that we're gonna review how to you know, configure a click um, action. So here I am on the actions page and I have this call to action stack here and it's set to click. Now what I can do is I can enter in any button or paragraph with links in it inside this call to action stack. And whenever any of these are clicked, it will trigger the action. So if I click on this button, if I click on any of the links inside of a text area, this action will be triggered. Now, if we look at these text links, it's just a bare link, doesn't really have anything special. Now, however, this second link that we have in here, this is set to actually be a URL and it's set to be open in new window. Now, if you remember from the overview video, if you have a link that triggers an action and it's set to open in a new window, that link will actually open up in a new window. But then when the user comes back to your web page, they'll see that that action has been triggered. So you'll see the light box or whatever stack that you launched within your action. So that's a very nice uh, feature. Now I wanted to review the, the actual exit intent uh, logic here. The focus out exit intent, which is the default, basically means if the window is gonna focus out. So the way we can trigger that is if we click on the browser bar, we'll see that that exit intent is shown, okay? Um, if we click outside of the window at all, so I clicked on my desktop, the browser window is no longer active. It launches the exit intent. So that is focus out. The next exit intent is called mouse leave top. And what you'll notice is if my mouse ever crosses above the document, so it leaves the document on the top, it triggers the exit intent. So basically, it, it the logic here is that the user is gonna switch tabs, the user is gonna click on a button, the user is gonna click on the browser URL bar, the user is gonna leave your web page potentially, okay? This could trigger a lot of false positives, okay? But this is probably the most popular method that exit intent is used across the web. And what you'll notice is my mouse can leave the browser at any other point. It can leave on the left, it can leave on the right, it can go on the bottom, and it doesn't get triggered. It only gets triggered if the mouse leaves at the top of the window. Now, the last option here is leave mouse top and focus out. 
This is a combination of the two. I can now, my mouse can now leave anywhere. I can make the window lose focus by clicking on my desktop. The browser is no longer active. I can click back on it, right? My, my mouse can go above and it's not gonna trigger anything. The only time it's going to get triggered is if I click on the browser bar, okay? Or I, I add a new tab, okay? So the mouse has to leave on top of the page and then the window needs to be moved out of focus. So it's this is a combination of the, the previous two actions or ex exit intents that we looked at. Now I just wanted to really quickly touch based on the integrations since we're doing a video on a how to just to give you an example. So here is a example glider stack uh, that is getting launched via a call to action. And inside the glider settings, there is an external launch ID, which is set to be glider. If we scroll down and look at the call to action that launches this glider, okay, we'll see that the call to action has been set to be glider and the glider ID is set to surprise glider, right? Which is what the ID was inside the glider stack, okay? The same thing happens for everything. Top box, um, focus uses the button label, okay? So whatever you've set to as the button label for focus, okay? The rest are all the IDs inside the stacks. For example, if we look at focus, if I scroll down and let's look at focus, okay? We'll see that the label here is set to be button label. And then in my call to action, this is exactly what I would put into the call to action um, setting for the ID for focus. Now, focus has another um, thing with it. Focus has a button itself. And many times if you're gonna be using call to action, you might not want focus's button on the page. Maybe you do, maybe you want the button there and then have something externally call that potentially as well, okay? So having an option that the customer can click on it, else maybe it's an exit intent. Okay, but what if we don't want focuses button on the page? A nice workaround for this is to simply use my free static height stack. And basically you would throw focus inside static height and you're gonna set the height to be zero pixels. So it's still on the page um, and it's not a hidden element so we can still trigger actions off of it, but it's just set to be zero pixels tall. So it will be effectively invisible, but it will still reside on the page. Now, the last thing we're gonna look at is the scroll line stack that comes with the call to action as well. And if you look at this, you'll see that um, basically in edit mode, you see the, the color of the bar, okay? And the settings are very you know, self-explanatory. The position of your bar, is it gonna be on the top, the bottom, the left, or the right? What are the two colors that you want it to be? The opacity of the bar, what's the size, and then Z index. So based on the themes that you're using, you might need to tweak the Z index in case things are below it or sitting on top of it and things of that nature, okay? Um, then you can also reverse direction. So basically, it's kind of counterintuitive and the scroll bar goes in the opposite direction uh, that you might expect it to. Now, the rest of the settings in the stack are identical to the normal call to action stack. Uh, because when scroll line reaches the bottom of the page, it can launch an action. Now, if you don't want to launch an action, you can set the call to action to none, which is the default, okay? But if you want a call to action at the end, you do the same exact thing that we just reviewed. You set your action, you define your occurrence, and then you define your tracker if you wanna send that inf event information to your analytics software. And that's it, that is call to action. It's really simple to use. You see, there's not too many settings, but it's powerful, right? Um, especially it could be a little bit tricky trying to get the, all those integrations working, just tying the IDs. And again, it's just making sure you, the ID you set in the integration stack is the same thing in the call to action stack, you know? Um, so it's pretty simple to use. Uh, I hope you understand kind of those event triggers, especially the exit intent. I want to make sure that you understood under what conditions those will get launched, right? So that you can strategically plan on how you're going to interact with your visitors and your customers. I hope you love call to action. Um, don't overuse it, right? I know I've, I really explained the occurrence settings, right? And how we can leverage those to not be annoying to our users, okay? Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, 
I don't want to use this at all because I, this is the most annoying thing on the web ever. But what that said is these things work. They, they work to build your email list. They work to build customers and leads while a lot of us may be potentially more advanced users and people that are on the web all the time and design web, right? We might find them as an annoyance, but the research shows that this works. So hopefully with the settings and the occurrences and how we can customize the triggers, we can make it so that it's good for us. Um, we don't, and we're not going to be an annoyance to our users, right? I think it's powerful. Um, I can't wait to use it. I'm going to start, you might start seeing it uh, here and there on my sites as well, especially when I redesign my site later this year. So without further ado, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit and I hope you love call to action. So thanks very much, everybody. Bye.